everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels and the Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. My name is Samantha Genser. I'm going to be your show host for you today. We have a very exciting show for you guys. We are first going to be going over the rivalry between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. The Texas A&M winning the NCAA D1 Women's Tennis Championships, swimmers to watch in the Olympics, Minnesota and Boston battling to win the PWHL Championships, and make sure you stay till the end to hear about the top 10 beach volleyball players around the world. Before we begin, I wanted to ask that you guys like and follow the show, and to become a part of our show to tip and donate using the link gsmcpodcast.net. Also, this puts your questions at the top of the list so that I see them, so they get read on the air, and I can see your questions and comments. And we do get a lot of questions from viewers, so it is very helpful if you do use this link. Also, it really does help the show. Okay. I also just want to put in a little disclaimer. I am currently in Texas, and it is hailing outside. For some reason, it hails in Texas in the summer. So if you can hear the pounding on the roof, that is the hail that is literally the size of more than, honestly, they're kind of bigger than golf balls right now. So it's a little terrifying, but, so I really apologize for the noise in the background, if you could hear it. Okay, we're just going to get right ahead and started with the first segment where we talk about the rivalry between Clark and Reese. I'm very excited for this segment. I love talking about the WNBA and talking about both of these players because they are my favorite rookies. Well, two of my favorite rookies. So, very exciting. Okay, so Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark are the top two rookies we have seen in this year's WNBA season so far. Reese has had a standout season with the LSU Tigers on the basketball team. She stands at 6 feet 3 inches, and she's a forward known for her dynamic playing style and impressive athleticism. During her time at LSU, Reese quickly became a a key player due to her ability to dominate on both ends of the court. She is known for her aggressive rebounding, scoring prowess, and ability to impact games significantly. Her performance was instrumental in LSU's success. I'm so sorry guys. Okay, it's actually kind of terrifying. The hail outside is literally the size of like softballs. This is so bad. Oh my gosh. I can see like our pool right in front of me is like splashing all over the place. Okay, I'm sorry. Continuing back to Angel Reese. Her performance, like I said, was instrumental in LSU's success and she has garnered attention for her potential to be one of the top players in the country. Reese's presence on the court is marked by her intensity and competitiveness, making her a formidable opponent in the NCAA. On the other hand, Caitlin Clark, during her time with the University of Iowa, Iowa Hawkeyes women's basketball team, she's been nothing short of phenomenal. A guard known for her extraordinary scoring ability, Clark stands out due to her impressive range and shooting accuracy, including from beyond the three-point line. Her court vision and passion, passing skills are really exceptional, making her a formidable player as well. Caitlin Clark has garnered national attention and numerous accolades for her performances, establishing herself as one of the premier talents in college basketball. Her all around game and competitive spirit make her stand on athlete at Iowa, and she really is doing great in Indiana Fever, um, but they have yet to win a game. They are struggling in the beginning of the season, really trailing behind a lot of teams, especially with a serious loss to the New York Liberty as one of their very first games. Clark has become very frustrated with her team, at least it seems that way. There's been very, very high expectations for her. People have thought she was going to revive the team and turn them around and make them 10 times better, but that's just not possible. I don't think Clark has been disappointed in by any means. She has been a standout player on the team and has done absolutely amazing in the recent games. Her first game, however, was not great with her 10 turnovers, but still she has improved since then in her most recent games. It's been a learning experience, and I have a lot, and I mean a lot, of confidence in her skills. Reese plays for the Chicago Sky, and their record stands at 2-2, two to two, two wins and two losses. Reese has had a solid start. For the season, she's averaging 12.3 points and 7.8 rebounds, which ranks second and first among rookies. Being on two of the top college basketball teams, Clark and Reese were huge rivals, especially last year, and they helped gain so much interest in women's college basketball because of their crazy rivalry. So we're going to talk about their rivalry and the drama that stirs from the both of them. 
One of the most famous taunts made by Reese to Clark was made during the national championship game. In April 2023 at the NCAA national championship game between LSU and Iowa, Reese shadowed Clark around the course and made a you can't see me gesture, which was originally popularized by John Cena by waving her hand in front of her face. Reese also pointed at her ring finger, making reference to the championship prize that would soon be hers. Afterwards, some criticized Reese for the lack of sportsmanship. For instance, ESPN personality Keith Oberman tweeted after the game about Reese. She wrote, doesn't matter the gender, the sport, the background, you're seconds away from the championship, and you do something like this and overshadow all the good. Mindless, careless, and what kind of coach does this team have? In my opinion, I don't think it's that bad what Reese did. Yes, it was petty and it lacked good sportsmanship. I also hate to see these top two basketball players not support each other on the court. Okay, so I'm sorry, we might be losing power now. Um, <laughs> if you guys can see the flash. But you have to remember this encounter was during their national championship. Of course, they aren't gonna be super friendly with each other on the court. Also, apparently Clark has done the exact same thing, the exact same you can't see me gesture two games earlier in the tournament without any backlash. And as a result, Reese called out the double standard, which is totally valid. It is weird that Clark had done the same motions and had shown a lack of sportsmanship, but as soon as Reese did it, it was a huge issue. I don't know, there's a double standard there, and I would like to dive into how that's messed up, but but anyway, overall, after Reese was caught up for a gesture, Clark actually defended her. Clark told ESPN two days after the national championship game, I don't think Angel should be criticized at all. I'm just one that competes and she competed. I think everybody knew there was going to be a little trash talk in the entire tournament. It's not just me and Angel. Men have always had trash talk. You should be able to play with that emotion. That's how every girl should continue to play. It does upset me that Reese was criticized for trash talking and whatnot because Clark is right. The game is very competitive. Like, of course, there's going to be some trash talking and we can't just judge people for for that when it's a completely normal and common thing that happens in games. It's also from both sides. So it's not like it shouldn't be unexpected. It's a competitive game. But here's another thing that has been a huge part of the rivalry, the White House controversy. It is a customary gesture of the White House to invite the national championship winners to the school for a celebration, but when First Lady Jill Biden said she wanted to invite runner-up Ohio as well, Iowa, I don't know why I keep mispronouncing Iowa, okay, I'm so sorry. Um, First Lady Jill Biden, uh, she wanted to invite Iowa as well, but it didn't sit well with Reese. In response, Reese tweeted a link to a story about the Iowa invite and wrote, quote, a joke with three rolling on the floor laughing emojis. The first lady press secretary, Vanessa Valdivia, explained Biden's thought process saying the invitation to both teams was meant to applaud the historic game and all women athletes and hope to acknowledge how far women have advanced in sports since the passing of Title IX. This whole controversy is a bit confusing, I'll be honest. I totally understand why Reese was upset that Iowa went to the White House, but I just feel like posting about it probably wasn't the best thing to do. The season was over at this point. She probably should have just supported Iowa going to the White House, or if she didn't want to do that, then she probably should not have posted anything at all. But also, if that was me, I would be upset too. And I understand why she was upset. Her team definitely should have gotten the same national attention and not just one of the teams if that makes sense i personally wouldn't have posted but also i feel like it was valid and reasonable to post after it to stand up for your team so obviously this rivalry has continued throughout the WNBA season and many people are always looking for the drama between the two recently reese deleted a social media post which referenced the league's new policy on charter flights as well as attendance many viewed reese's post as a shot at Caitlin clark after the Sky's 90-81 victory over the New York Liberty at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Reese, who had 13 points and 9 rebounds in the win, took to social media. In the post, she said, And that's one getting a win in a packed area, not just because of one player on our charter flight. When Clark visited Barclays Center to take on the Liberty last weekend, 17,735 fans showed up. Last night's attendance with Reese in town against the Liberty was listed at 12,049 people, so big difference there. Angel Reese during the Skies game against the, um, so that was during Angel Reese's game, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> just really, I just said like a bunch of big numbers and I was like that. Yeah, so there's been a, there's a bit of a different number in attendance there. Before a post 
by Reese's mother. It was pretty much unknown if Reese was directing her comment at Clark or Hall of Famer Charles Barkley, who said that WNBA veterans should be glad people are watching because of Clark. People suspected it was about Clark mainly because Reese has repeatedly stated that the WNBA's newfound popularity is due to more than just Clark, and I agree with that. Yes, a lot of attention has come because of Clark, but also because of all the other rookies and players and everything else the WNBA has been doing to promote the league, like with the new franchises and such. But Reese's mother posted that Reese was not taking a shot at Clark. According to Reese's mother, the criticism from the media is misguided. What's more is that the reporting on the sense-deleted post has attracted racist comments online. Her mother specifically said, and I quote, that the comment was directed towards the media. Anyway, despite all these controversies and the rivalry that you have on the court, Reese and Clark are supposedly friendly to each other off the court. Back in March, we said about the rival between her and Clark, I don't think people realize it's not personal. Once we get out between those lines, if I see her wa you walking down the street, it's like, hey girl, what's up? Let's hang out. I think people just take it like we hate each other. Me and Kayla and Clark don't hate each other. I want everybody to understand that. Once I get between those lines, there's no friends. I'm going to trash talk to you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get in your head the whole entire game, but after the game, we can kick it. And then Caitlin Clark had said, we both grew up loving this game, and we're going to do anything we can to help our team's wins. Reese said that she was fine being cast in the villain role, especially in the wake of the interest in the rivalry helping the sport reach new heights. Specifically, she said, I'll take the hit for it, but I know we're growing women's basketball. If this is the way we're going to do it, then this is the way we're going to do it. The two are really just real competitive fire, and off the court, they are pretty much civil with each other. Sorry, I just got like one of those... Um, weather alerts on my phone that even if like your phone is off it will turn on so sorry if you could hear that buzzing and also the hail currently has stopped so that's good anyway these two are real competitive fire off the court they're pretty much civil with each other i think a lot of people are expecting there to be more to the on-court rivalry and people sort of read in between the lines with posts and comments to that just stirs up more trauma it's going to be interesting to see if these two star players will have more banter on the court, but I really don't see them as enemies as a lot of people do. I think they respect each other, and at the end of the day, when they're on the court, they're competing, and that is valid to trash talk or distract the person or whatnot. And they're not doing it in a super disrespectful way. They're passionate, com competitive players, but they still have the respect for one another, and I admire both of them for that. So... I don't know. I think the rivalry has just been a bit extended in some point and dramatic. It's been exaggerated a bit just because it's interesting to see the drama between the two unfold. But now we're going to move into our next segment where we're talking about Texas A&M winning the 2024 D1 Women's Tennis Championships. Before we get into that, we are going to take a short break, so I will see you guys soon. <laughs> 